Hi, my name is Emily, and I'm reporting to you from AADL Secret Lab about this spring's sci-fi book club selection, The Sirens of Mars by Sarah Stewart Johnson. This book is an amazingly well-written look into the human fascination with the possibility of finding life on Mars, a fascination that goes back thousands of years and extends into the present day. Johnson is not only a great writer and a great historical researcher, but she herself is a space scientist. She has a PhD from MIT, and she was a scientist on several Mars rover missions. So nobody better to tell this story than her. So what I want to do is read a short excerpt from this book to give you a taste of what it's like, and then I'm gonna tell you about a few things in our collection that I think will go really well with this book. So the selection that I want to read is from chapter 7, which is called Periopsis. I was a sophomore in college, one of thousands attending a crowded scientific conference, when I first saw the kaleidoscopic new map of Mars made from data collect collected by the Mars Global Surveyor mission. I'd taken my seat alongside some other undergraduates in the packed ballroom as an MIT professor named Mariah Zuber walked into the front of the room. She seemed impossibly small, standing behind the podium. Then her slides blazed to life and she began to speak. I remember feeling a little distracted at the beginning of her talk as her voice filled the cavernous hall and I puzzled over it for a few seconds. Then my back straightened as it became clear what I was responding to. It was the first time I'd ever heard a woman give a planetary science talk. As I willed myself to focus, I realized that Mariah was delivering a spectacular explanation of the mission science, better than any I'd ever heard. Her confidence and enthusiasm radiated, and the audience was locked in. Sitting there, Suddenly aware of our shared status as women in a room full of men, I couldn't help feeling a swell of pride, as if she was somehow speaking for me and the other aspiring female scientists in the room. Then she clicked to the magnificent map. She paused for a moment, letting it linger on the screen behind her, as if she knew the effect it would have. She gave us all a moment to soak it in to reckon with how different it was from anything that had come before. The usual cinnamon surface of Mars had been swallowed by a rainbow of color, magnificently delineating topographic contours. The iridescent surface was cut with canyons and chasms and spiral troughs. The northern hemisphere was as smooth as the abyssal plains of Earth's own seabed, tantalizing evidence of an ancient ocean. There were continuous layers of bright and dark bands alternating right down to the edge of the ice cap, a record not only of changes in the seasons, but also of long-term climate patterns. None of us had ever seen Mars like this, a place we could almost touch. None of us had ever seen her rendering had thrown the planet into exquisite relief, flinging two dimensions into three. Meridians arc down from the pole like strips of lead across the colorful sphere. In that darkened room, it shone to me like a church window. Now, there are a few things from our collection that I think will really supplement the experience of reading this book. Um, first is something that I don't have here to show you because it's so popular and it's always checked out, which is one of our telescopes. Did you know that AEDL has telescopes you can check out? They're in fact the first thing that got added to our tools collection. They're always checked out, they're super popular, so get yourself on the hold list for a telescope. A lot of what Johnson talks about in this book is when people could only view Mars with the naked eye or with telescopes, what did they think about it? So it would be great to get your own view of Mars through a telescope um, while you're reading this book to see uh, what scientists of the past thought about Mars. If you're reading this book, you have kids, you might want to discuss what you're reading about with your family. Uh, we actually have lots of great resources in our youth collection about Mars. And in fact, we actually have several picture books that are just about the Mars rover Curiosity. Uh, one that really caught my eye was this one. 
Curiosity, the Story of a Mars Rover by Marcus Modum. Um, this book is just packed full of information. I mean, the illustrations are great. It makes the rover look very cute. So there's that. Um, but it's just so full of information about how the rover was built, how they launched it, how it landed on Mars, uh, the, the types of things that it is uh, collecting, the types of data that it's sending back to Earth. It's just a really beautiful little kid's book, um, but it is super packed full of information. So, um, you know, reading this to your kids who are, who are obsessed with space, um, this, this will be uh, a good selection for sure. The other thing that I want to share is a Nova episode that you can download through our streaming collection. So if you go to aadl.org and you type Mars into the search bar and then you select format streaming video, uh, you'll see several things come up and one that is just called Mars and uh, it's dated uh, 2019. And so that's the episode of Nova that I'm talking about. It's about an hour long. It's really good. And actually, several of the scientists who are in there as talking heads are people that Johnson worked with. And she talks about their work in this book. Um, and so that episode is, again, it's all about life on Mars and, um, you know, why Mars is the way it is, what might have happened to life there. Uh, it's a really great companion to this book. To find out more about the Sci-Fi Book Club, go to sciencefriday.com. They are going to have lots of cool uh, community calls and events about the book all throughout the month of March, and it's a great way to enrich your experience. And of course, you can grab a copy of The Sirens of Mars at AADL. Thanks.